I'm not comfortable saying I'm environmental racist, but I have to say it um, because I'm part of an institutional systems um, that do um, lead to these disparities that I'm doing research on. Um, but the process getting there uh, actually is I have to give credit to my peers and particularly uh, faculty on this campus who've challenged me. They've known my environmental justice work, um, but they also know that um, the kind of institutional racism that they've confronted their entire lives is, is around us and shapes um, our universities, our cities, our neighborhoods. And so the first uh, step I took towards just being able to say I'm an environmental racist, I have to give credit to Kristen French, who's a Woodring professor here. She was already working with a group and they did a diversity training with us. And it was two Fridays. First Friday went off um, and it was really nice. And then it literally was Thursday night at 11 o'clock when I got a text from Kristen. And she said, Troy, one of our facilitators and presenters tomorrow, which is a, was a presentation about her identity as an Asian American, got sick. Would you mind filling in? I'm like, well, okay, what do you want me to talk about? You know, this is all text. And she says, can you talk about white privilege? And uh, I kind of thought about it, and I started making a PowerPoint slide and coming up with some thoughts to see if I would get any traction and maybe could say something useful. And I felt like, yeah, I was... And it was one of those times where I really systematically kind of interrogated my history, who I was as a white male, and many of my different experiences, and it started to kind of crystallize. And I said, yes, I'll do it. And so I gave a talk on um, white privilege in the environmental field. And the, then the second person that pushed me even further uh, is Damani Johnson, Vernon Johnson, who's an African-American political scientist here at, at Western and is a real leader in um, taking on these institutional racism. And he uh, helped me pay a lot more attention to Robin D'Angelo's work, who writes about white privilege, what it means to be white, but also white fragility. One of the key aspects and challenges in confronting institutional racism is we don't think of it in institutional terms, racism. We always think of it in individual terms. It's part of U.S. culture to be individualistic. And so individuals will uh, be very uncomfortable with being a, you know, associated with racism because they've never been racist, right? That's the claim. They've never done anything racist to a person of color explicitly on purpose, right? And so talking about racism gets really uncomfortable. So what Damani challenged me to do was to actually change my talk from, you know, white privilege, white environmental privilege to confessions of an environmental racist. You know, I, I pondered on it, and I read some more of Robin and I, you know, Robin D'Angelo's work, and thought about this, and and so I agreed to do that in a facilitation with an environmental group that we were working with uh, to model what it's like to not be racist explicitly, but part of an insti a set of institutions that end up leading to racist outcomes. So that's the process that I've gone through with the support and help and mentorship of others challenging me to do that. Um, and that is now a, you know, something I've done with my department, my college, 
Uh, I've done it with environmental group. And someday I hope to have an opportunity to do that with my students. That's a conversation we need to have more of um, because that's how we make progress on these really tough issues.